I think it's one of the most important key questions. I'll give you two. Number one is, what results are expected of me? What results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs, what am I supposed to produce in my job? A second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? Why am I on the payroll? What results are expected? The results that are expected of us in selling are sales. And the only time that we are working is when we are doing something that contributes directly to that result. Isn't that true? <coughs> but of course, why do we do the other things? I've come to the conviction that the reason why we do the other things is because they are fun and easy rather than hard and necessary. I think the major reason why people fail in life, if I can pass this on, which wasn't part of this, but the major reason why people fail in life is because of the expediency factor. That we always do, and we always take the fastest and easiest route to get the things that we want. But the fastest and easiest route in life is almost always the route to failure. It's short-term gain for long-term pain. We do what is fun and easy today instead of what is hard and necessary, and then we have to do what is hard and necessary at the end of our life when it's too late. And you'll find that the willingness and the ability to discipline yourself, to be clear about what it is you want, to be clear where you're going, to be clear about the results that you're expected to accomplish, and then to only work on those results. The ability to discipline yourself to do that is absolutely critical for success. It is not possible to conceive of a person being successful who is not capable of disciplining themselves to do what is hard and what is necessary rather than what is fun and easy. And when, especially when it comes to managing your time, when it comes to looking at what you should do on a day-to-day -day basis, focus on results, not activities. Now let me give you a method which has helped me Write out your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, uh, then they're not really goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they say, a wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly, and then do this. Every single morning, rewrite your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed. Rewrite your major goals every single morning. Now, this should take you about two to four minutes, maybe five. You can do it all in a paragraph. If, for instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year, every single morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be excellent in real estate, say, I am an excellent salesperson in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, write down your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed today every single morning. And then every single evening, take about five, 10 minutes, instead of watching television, just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress. And sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day and say, what have I done right today? What have I done right that's moved me toward my goals? And second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those, those four steps, by the way, writing and rewriting your goal each morning, reviewing them in the evening, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you'll ask yourself those two questions in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've ever seen. I learned it some years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning. The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them and we don't set them highly enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine you could have anything that you want, anything that you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis, you can have. Anything that you are crystal clear about wanting and are willing to pay the price to get, you can have. So clarity is the key. Be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you have to do to get it. Be clear about your vision. Be clear. Speak, walk, talk, and act with clarity. And that's the final point with regard to clarity. I have seen many men and women who have tripped themselves up by being beaters around the bushers, if you like. They are very careful about whatever they say, and by the time they say it, people have gone home for lunch. And one of the keys to success is to be very straight and to be very clear, be very precise. Interesting, one of the reasons why people do not speak to the point is for fear of offending others. Isn't that true? For fear of offending others. Interesting study they did last year, they asked a great number of executives, male and female, they said, if you had to tell a person something unfortunate with regard to their career that was going to affect their lives, and this is something that you've known for a long time, how would you go about breaking the news to them? And each of the person described the strategy they would take, they would set up the time right they would start off with a talk about uh, talking about subjects that they had in common they would close the door and keep out the noise anyways they went around and around and they're all circuitous routes of how they would get to the point and then they reversed the question they said how would you like to be informed of this same subject and every single one of them said I'd like to be informed in a straightforward way I'd like somebody to tell me straight the news you see all of us want to be dealt with in a straightforward way because we know we can take whatever it is. But we think that everybody else is too fragile. So what we do is we pussyfoot and tippy-toe around and, and avoid giving them the news and we finally do get the news to them. Sometimes causes more problems than is necessary. So be straightforward. Be clear in your language. Be clear in your actions. Let people know exactly where you stand and let people know exactly what you've said and what you mean. Very, very important. And it takes practice, by the way. Uh, every single one of these habit patterns, every single one of these qualities has to be learned by practice.
And I sat down and looked at this whole concept of excellence, and I saw something that I hadn't noticed. It's almost like something brought to the surface of your mind. I noticed that every single man or woman that I had studied who had achieved any kind of success in any field whatsoever had done it after they had made a commitment to becoming excellent in that field. And I began to look and I began to compare and I began to talk to people and I speak to thousands of people virtually every month. I found that I never found a single person who was successful who was not excellent at what they did. That competence, the commitment to becoming excellent in your chosen field is an indispensable prerequisite for success. That if you are not good at what you do, you haven't got a chance in our competitive society unless you win the lottery. That success is predictable if you commit yourself to becoming excellent. It does a whole lot of other things within your mind, but if you commit yourself to becoming excellent, it changes everything about you. And only the top 5 or 10 percent are excellent. You've heard the rule, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle, that the top 20 percent of salespeople make 80 percent of the sales, that the bottom 80 percent of salespeople make 20 percent of the sales. Do you, know, do you know what the difference, the ratio is there? The ratio is the difference between 16 to 1. That the average income of people in the top 20 percent is 16 times the average income of the people in the bottom 80%. Now let me ask you a question. Does it mean the people in the top 20% are 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80%? 16 times more experience? Do they work 16 times the number of hours? Do they have 16 times the number of years of education? Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything? But 20% of these people are making 16 times the average of the rest. Prudential Insurance Company did a study some years ago, and they put the thousands of agents that they have throughout the United States into their computers and compared their income, and it came out the 80-20 rule worked. 20% of the salespeople were doing 80% of the business. Well, they had all the data on the computer, so they ran it through one more time. They said, what's the average income of the top 20% of the top 20% compared to the bottom 80%? Now, for those mathematicians among you, that works out to the top 4%. What was the average income? They found the top 4% were earning on average 32 times the average of the people in the bottom 80%. So they said, this is interesting, and they ran it through one more time. They found that the top 20% of the top 20% of the top 20%, which is the top 0.8%, that's good, top 0.8% were earning on average 54 times the average of the people in the bottom 80%. What they found is that in every state and in every major city where they had an office with a large number of agents working out of it, there was one agent who was selling the same product at the same price to the same people with the same competition under the same circumstances, under the same set of difficulties in the economy, who was earning 50 times the amount of the average adult. That there were 50 agents in the office and one person was earning more than all of them put together. Isn't that amazing? And one of the things they found is that the key to this was that each one of these agents had made the commitment to become excellent early in their career. They didn't say, I'm going to go into this and I'm going to earn a living. They said, I'm going to go into this and I'm going to be the best. You must commit yourself to excellence. You must commit yourself to becoming the best. And the wonderful thing is that excellence is a journey. It's not a destination. You never get there. Complacency and satisfaction are the key enemies of excellence. But once you commit yourself to becoming excellent, the whole world opens up for you. A very important point of excellence is this means simply this. Do your best every time out and always strive to do it better. Do your best every time out and always strive to do it better. Remember, it's usually the last 5 or 10% of any job or project that makes all the difference. And what we do is we get to 90% done and then we start to drag our heels. We start to put the paperwork aside. We start to think of excuses. We start to do what is fun and easy rather than what is hard and necessary. And if you're going to do anything at all, the only time you're going to get any joy out of it if you, is if you do it well. You see, when we do something well, it gives us a feeling of self-esteem and pride. We feel like a winner. But if we do things in an average way, it doesn't give us anything. You notice that? It doesn't give us anything. We do it in an average way, it doesn't give us anything. But if we do it in a really exceptional way, it makes us feel wonderful about ourselves. You see, you don't have to be a quantum leap different from somebody else. You just have to be a little tiny bit different in the critical areas that make a difference. And you, get, you can achieve that simply by making it a goal, setting it as a goal, and working on it. You can become anything that you want to become. The harder you work, the better you get. The harder you work, the better you get. You know, in our society today, there's a lot of controversy over why should I work so hard for my job. The fact of the matter is that less than 5% really succeed. That's less than 5% of the population really succeed at life. Of 100 people working today, only one will be wealthy when they retire. Four will be financially independent, 15 will have some savings, 80% will be broke and dependent upon charities and pensions. Only 1 or 2% of people in each generation really makes it in life. And in every single study, those people who make it are those who work hard, hard, hard. And if you think that it's hard to be successful, try being a failure. Try coming to the end of the trail with no money, dependent upon pensions, and you don't know what hard is until you try living like that. But if you work hard, the average self-made millionaire in America works 12 to 13 hours a day. Works about 60 to 65 hours a week. I'll tell you this with regard to hard work, that you, in our society you only work 8 hours a day for survival. 
everything over eight hours is for success. If you're only working eight hours a day, you better have a rich uncle or you better have somebody else who's going to take care of you because eight hours a day only gets you survival in our society. Because it's so competitive that somebody else is working nine, they've got an edge on you. Somebody else is working ten, they've got a bigger edge on you. Every hour over eight that you invest is an investment in your future, is an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over eight, whether it's studying or reading or working, if you put in the hours, it will pay off and it will pay off in spades. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed, it's hundreds of seeds. There's a crop that you put in, but you must put the seed in the ground first. The market only pays excellent rewards for excellent performance. It pays average rewards for average performance. It pays below average rewards for below average performance. And I talk to men and women all over America who are unhappy and they're sad and they don't like their work. And you know why? It's because they're not good at what they're doing. And let me give you a couple of key points. Is first of all, you'll never have a feeling of self-esteem and self-worth. You'll never feel wonderful about yourself until you know that you are good at what you're doing. Number two is if you do not love your work enough to want to be the best at it, get out of it the way you would get out of a burning house. Do not stay at a job that you do not love because it is the high road to failure, dissatisfaction, frustration, and unhappiness in life. Develop a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency is a quality that is possessed by only 2% of the population. 2% of the population do things fast. 2% of the population have a bias for action. Imagine if you own a company and you had two people in the company and both of them were reasonably well talented, both of them were doing reasonably well, except one person had a sense of urgency and did things fast and every time you give them something to do, they took it and they ran with it like a ball player catching a fumble and running for the goal line. The other person got to it after lunch or maybe next Monday or no rush, week's almost over, Thursday afternoon and so on. Which one would you give additional responsibility to? Which one would you promote? Which one would you spend money training? Which one would you send to places where you needed help? It's always the person with a sense of urgency. Uh, the Gallup organization that just did a wonderful book called The Great American Success Story, they surveyed 1,500 people in Marquis Who's Who in America. 1,500 of the most respected men and women in America. And they asked them, what do you consider to be the most important single quality of success? And they agreed almost unanimously on common sense. Just common sense. Good common sense. As my friend Charlie Jarvis says, the average person has an enormous amount of common sense because they haven't used any of it yet. You can train your mind to have common sense. You can train your mind to think things through before acting. In my experience, action without thinking is the cause of every failure. Action without thinking is the cause of every failure. And common sense comes from taking the time to think things through before you act. Listen to your intuition. Your intuition is one of the best guides that you possibly have. You know from some of the other work that we've done is that each person has inside them an intuitive sense which will always give you the exact right answer for you. They've done some studies between men and women. When they test women's intuition, you've heard of women's intuition, everybody's heard of women's intuition. They find that when you give men and women tests and they're asked to answer on the basis of their intuition, men's intuition is equally as accurate as women's intuition. The only difference is that in real life, women have the intelligence to listen to their intuition which is why they're smarter than men. And women and men do not listen to their intuition. Instead, they override their intuition because they're trying to get something they want the fastest and easiest way, even if their gut feeling says don't do it. Your intuition will always give you the most accurate answer for you. It's almost like an inbuilt computer that will take all of your life experience and knowledge and everything going on around you and give you exactly the right answer. So listen to your intuition. Learn from your setbacks. This is one of the characteristics of high performing men and women is that every single time they have a problem or a difficulty, they sit back and they dissect it and they learn everything possible from it. They try to develop general principles from each setback. They say, what is the valuable lesson I can learn. So you take a look at everything that has happened to you, take a look at the very most difficult experience that you're in right now and ask yourself, what is the most valuable lesson I can learn from this experience? And believe me, if you look for the lesson, in the Bible it says, seek and ye shall find. It doesn't say seek and occasionally you might find something. It says, seek and ye shall find. If you look for the valuable lesson or the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit in every difficulty, you will find it. It's always there. And I, I love the line from Socrates that says, the unexamined life is not worth living, which means that a life where you do not take the time to reflect on your experiences. Aristotle said that wisdom is an equal measure of experience plus reflection. And the reason so few people have wisdom is what they have is experience, 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 but they never take the time to sit back and reflect on what's happening to them, reflect on what they're learning. How many people here have seen people get out of bad relationships and get immediately back into bad relationships? Or get out of a lousy job and immediately join a company and get into another lousy job? 
What is the natural thing that people do? They, they get fired or laid off from a job, they quit, they go down the street, they look for what? Another job exactly just like, and act exactly like it. The hallmark of creativity is curiosity. The hallmark of ignorance and stupidity is the cessation or stopping from asking questions. And I've worked with some of the brightest men and women in this nation, and I find that the smartest people of all, the ones that have the greatest education and the most experience are the ones who ask the most questions. They ask questions almost as if they were children but they never stop asking questions. They're very open and flexible, and they have the ability, once they learn a new piece of information, to drop what they're doing if the new information contradicts it and do something else. Do you know what most people do? Most people keep on doing what they're doing until they run into a wall. As they say, the more you do of what you're doing, the more you'll get of what you've got. Someone pointed out to me not long ago, and I think it's very true, is that all changes in our life come with the input of new information. That if we do not have new information, we keep on doing the same thing forever as the result of inertia. And creative people are always looking for faster, better, easier, cheaper, newer ways to do things. Remember, 80% of everything that we are doing today in our general business will be different five years from now. 80% of the products that we use, the food that we eat, the cars we drive, the music we listen to, the movies we go to, even the streets we drive on, 80% of everything will be new in five years. That's how rapidly things are changing. According to the research, all you need is an idea that's 10% new to start a fortune. An idea that's 10% new. As a matter of fact, an idea that's more than 10% new is probably too new for the average consumer to accept it. An idea that's 10% new. How many times have you been going about your daily business and you see the need for a product or service? And you say, now I wonder why somebody doesn't produce that. And about two or three years, then you say, well, it can't be any good. It's, I thought of it after, after all. And then two or three years later, a company comes out with that idea, or some company comes and makes a million dollars that, and you say, I thought of that idea two or three years ago. Every single person here has had that experience. What you have to do is trust your ideas. If you decide that you're going to earn a certain amount of money, that you're going to achieve a certain level of wealth, that you're going to achieve a certain life estate, and you program that into your subconscious mind, and you then turn it over to your intuition, you will get the ideas, the insights, the inspirations necessary to achieve your goals. And that's the only difference between very wealthy, successful people and the average person is that they simply follow their intuition. They're not smarter, they're not different, they're not more educated, they're not more talented, they just follow that inner guide. Develop the people skills that you need to be successful. Take courses in communications. Take courses in effective listening. Take courses in public speaking. You know one of the most important parts of communicating and getting along well with others is the size of your vocabulary. You've probably heard that before. The size of your vocabulary, your ability to express yourself orally, your ability to stand on your feet, your ability to write effectively and get your point across to others will have a tremendous impact on your life because you cannot imagine a successful person who cannot communicate effectively with other people. And you can develop the capacity to be an excellent communicator. If you were to learn one new word a day, if you were to make an effort by carrying a dictionary around, I, used to, I have taught myself French, Spanish, German, and smatterings of about 10 other languages.